This is Jordan Tower with JT News. Make sure you smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. Let's get right into the news. Two chains. Okay, so this is a guy who lost his mind when he finally got on. This is a guy who was suppressed for years in his own mind, okay? When he was uh, duffel bag boys, right? Uh, with, uh, I, I, it's been so long, with Dalla, right? Okay, so him and Dalla used to be a group. He used to be called Titty Boy, if you didn't know. Okay, so he lost his mind when he got on. When I moved to Atlanta around what? End of 09, 2010, uh, drummer boy and a couple other people, yo, you should work with 2 Chains. Um, he's got a new, you know, he's trying to, like, break out on his own, right? They would said Titty Boy. It was Titty Boy first, right? He, he didn't switch to 2 Chains till after he started getting the buzz, right? And I think he did that to get out of his deal with DTP. If Maybe. Who knows? But anyways. Me and him clicked. We worked a lot together. Um, I, I liked his style. It reminded me a little Wayne. It's this. He was using that same Wayne type of flow and everything. And he happened to be good friends with Wayne, obviously, from Duffel Bag Boy song, right? Well, as you know from the Duffel Bag Boy song, he wasn't from that. But, uh, you know, he was able to finagle a verse from Wayne when he was, or a hook when Wayne was super hot. So they have a tight relationship. Anyways. Young Jock. I thought I was the only one that might have had a... I didn't really have any issues with 2 Chains. I just noticed a super shift in his uh, demeanor. And I just... I was cool on him. You know? Like, I, I, I'm i not going to, like... I don't care. You know? Like, you know, like, okay, we'll, we'll keep it moving. You know? Like, but it's a shame when people get so in their head that they're too cool for school. You know? So, anyways... um. Young Jock paid for a record from Two Chains when he got hot. When he had uh, he had riding around, I'm getting it. I'm riding around. I remember. I remember distinctly when that came out, because that's when he really felt like, oh, I'm on, right? And I already had a feeling before that that he had that. He was. He was. He was changing. You know. So uh, I. That dropped, and then everybody wanted to get him on a record, right? And he had a history of doing this in Atlanta. He would take maybe like a deposit or something on the record. Jock paid him, I guess, a deposit. First he did it for love. Then Jock wanted to like actually put the record out on radio. So, so he gave him a deposit, and he said, hey, when we get the deal with the, la you know, with, with the label, when everything's signed off, they're going to give you the second half. The, the second half of the money is going to come from the label. Now, QCP at this time teamed up with Jock. They both put up $30,000 or, you know, to, it costs a lot of money to move a record on radio. So they were doing the radio route. It wasn't that great of a record anyway. So, I mean, 2 chains went in on it. I just didn't like the whole record. Okay, but that's neither here nor there. That was the style of record back then. It wasn't timeless. It was for the moment. This is the name of the record. So, <clears throat> Jock goes ahead and pays Two Chain some money, and he keeps he's not getting the clearance from Two Chains and the label. Uh, so he goes to him and can't get the paperwork. So the person that's working Jock's record said or at the label said, "Hey." I'm going to be real with you. I don't think they want this record out there like that because they they're not signing off on it. They're not giving us the paperwork. We did the contracts already that states how much money they're going to get as soon as it's signed off, and they still won't do it. He did this to a bunch of people. I'm not going to name other names. I heard this, and I think I even shot one of the videos that he was in with one of them, and they couldn't move it on the radio. It was a, It was a bad record anyways. So I don't blame him not signing off on it. But this is what he was doing. And you know what? No no shade. I'm just telling you what happened. Okay, you could say, oh, Jordan, you're bitter. I'm not bitter, okay? I'm just telling you. This is, this is just the facts. And I, I state this stuff because the facts get lost in translation. The facts get lost as time goes on, you know? A lot of people don't realize, but I when I first came to Atlanta... I really helped, you know, he did the work, he he did the records, you know, but not many people were paying attention to him, but I was like, you know what, and I'm glad he got on, you know, he was able to change his whole family's life and everything, okay, 
I mean, it's not like he was like, <clears throat> I know why he stopped messing with me. And I'll put this story out there because I don't care. You know, <clears throat> this is not a behind the scenes story because, you know, I, I do feel the only thing that that I didn't like about this situation is I thought we were friends. <laughs> thought we were cool. We weren't doing business together. I, I didn't take any money from him for these videos. Okay. Uh, the one thing I'll say that I appreciated he did when Ludacris wanted to get a hold of me, he gave Ludacris my number instead of trying to middleman the deal where Ludacris wanted to sponsor me with his liquor company. I'll give him that. And I, and I returned that favor. I'll tell you how I did. So... <clears throat> I did, I've done like 12 videos. I did like, I was just making sure he was at the top of World Star all the time, right? Chalk lines. We did two chains chalk lines, okay? Two chains station. They didn't want to put him at the top of World Star, but me and Q pretty much started that site together <clears throat> in 2007. You know, I was, uh, and <clears throat> I could get certain stuff at the top, you know? So all the time because. That was our working relationship, you know? So anyways, I was like, nah, put him at the top. He, he's from Duffel Bag Boys. He's going to go. So we did it. So every other week, 2 Chains was at the top. Chalk Lines video, Kitchen video, uh, Real South Side, Check Me Out, Rich Man's World, um, Big Money Talk with Yo Gotti. Get it in. Uh, between me and you. Got issues with uh, Young Buck. Hurry quick video. There's also a Trade the Truth video. Boo video, which he tried to, which is funny. He tried to reshoot this video after we shot it. I, at this point, I'm ripping and running with videos. If I could squeeze a video in, let's get it in. We, we got to go do the white room. For, for, for uh, and get the video done, let's get it done. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're making an impact at this point. The video just has to be good enough to put out, okay? Um, they, they never ended up reshooting the video. They shot like a couple scenes, it didn't go. But anyways, there's more videos than that. That's just a few. That's just a few. I think we shot a, a total of 10 to 12 videos, okay? They actually put it all out on DVD, which I never got paid for that DVD. But uh, they put it on a DVD and put it out called Cocaine Cowboy or Cowboys, something. It doesn't matter. And uh, at this time, he got with Street Execs. I think his name is Charlie. He had managed Travis Porter. So they... During our process of working, he got with them, and they were really working him at radio. They were doing the other part. Uh, his DJ, I forget his DJ's name, he did a lot for 2 Chains because it takes a lot of things to get an artist off. It's not just videos. The videos is great, right? And him being on the top of World Star every other week for six months, or every at least yeah it was every other week for six months helped a lot you know it shows that okay this guy's next especially around that time we're talking 2010 right so they were able to finagle their way into radio i'm sure charlie put up some money <clears throat> and two chains put, put up some money and uh i remember when things shifted though and this is what he did to a lot of other people he started feeling himself. I was like, all right, so let's do uh, F the Roof video. Uh, I had a guy in Miami that had chopped off. We all know him, Stack. I think his name was Stacks or something. He's like, uh, he chopped the roof off of a, a Phantom. So it looked kind of cool, you know? And I was like, yo, let's do that. Let's go down to Miami and do that or something like He's like, oh, man, uh, I got so many people that want to do that video. Like all of a sudden now it's like, oh, no, nah, I got I got a lot of people that want to do this video and that video. Notice there is no F the roof video. So I was like, hmm, oh, this guy doesn't want to. This guy's too good for me now. I was like, OK. And that's not how I envisioned a lot of stuff. There's a couple artists I didn't charge for videos. I was not charging two chains for videos. I just felt like, okay, I let's see if this can go, you know? Because I looked at it like this. If I believe in you, 
I'm not putting my face out there, right? So if you get on, um, it's better for me because you know maybe I don't do your A-list videos, but I could do your B-side videos, and it's good for me because if you get signed to a big label, you can give me the B-side videos, and it's good promo for me, and plus labels pay, you know? So it'll pay off in the long run, right? In the meantime, Ludacris is asking me, he's like, hey, is uh, is 2 Chainz paying you for videos? I don't know if he was getting money from Ludacris to pay for videos or not, <laughs> you know? But I was like, nah. He was like, okay. And I was like, um, Ludacris is a stand-up guy. Let me just say that. You know, like, I'm sure people have their own issues with him. But business-wise, I always got paid on time for the promo videos that I was doing because I was helping him promote conjure liquor right he do stand-up business guy that's all i gotta say about him he was good and to repay two chains for just handing me that you know when Ludacris wanted to get in touch with me and he didn't middleman it in return i i uh two chains like louis vuitton so i i got him like a messenger bag from louis vuitton like the same color stuff that he likes you know like i just he liked that i got somebody like that around that time he liked louis i got him a messenger bag that's like i don't know 1300 bucks you know so i gave that to him um as a thank you gift you know like here boom um he didn't like that i don't think he liked that I, like, I, I think it hurt his ego when I gave him that pack. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Shice Bubs was with me when I dropped it off. And I remember Shice Bubs and I, you, if you don't know who Shice Bubs is, he's from Purple City Bird Gang. That was his thing, right? He, uh, we both got back in the car after I gave him that bag. And he was like, yo. He was, that was a funny vibe. And I was like, yeah, right? It was funny. And he was like, yeah, like, uh, he kind of like didn't like you giving him that. I said, I was just saying thank you for the the connect with Ludacris. You know, like Ludacris wanted, Ludacris was going to get in touch with me anyways, but like it was easier to do it that way. And um, yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> That was weird. And then I remember the last time I saw Two Chains in life. Maybe. No, 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 no. That wasn't the last time. But I remember um what was it? He uh oh yeah, 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 yeah. Me and a friend of mine went to go get a burger downtown in Atlanta, and we ran into Don Cannon, I think, and I was talking to him outside, and then Two Chains comes outside. I guess this is Everybody used to go to this spot called Yeah Burger. And 2 Chains was going out to talk to Don Can. Oh, no, my friend ran into 2 Chains in there getting a burger. I wasn't getting a burger. And then he came out, and he was like, oh, what's up? And I said, oh, Young Hollywood, because we had just, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had just come from L.A., and I had seen Juicy J and DJ Paul. I was hanging out with them in separately at the time, and... Juicy J said, your man is out here, 2 Chains." I said, no way. I said, so I hit up 2 Chains. I said, yo, you in L.A.? Let's link up. Because we happened to be in L.A. at the same time. Silence. Didn't hit me back. I was like, oh, okay. Cool. Because <laughs> I, I, it's not like he wasn't there anymore. I just left Juicy J, and he was like, yo, I just seen 2 Chains on Wilshire or something. And I remember when I seen him at the Yeah Burger, I said, damn, you couldn't even text me back? And he was like, no, nah, I was just busy, bro. I was like, yeah, okay. This is when Riding Around I'm Getting It was out. Uh, yeah. yeah. Two chances. I would, uh, he, got, he got Hollywood and stayed Hollywood, I think, for the next. He's probably still Hollywood today. It doesn't matter. Well, more power to him. Um. I'm glad he's able to, you know, I'm glad he got on, got signed to Def Jam, blew up. He's had a good career, you know. Um, that's it. That was a good story. But, um, yeah, I can relate to Young Jocks. He was, uh, 
he played Young Jock. Because Young Jock said uh, it destroyed my relationship with QCP because QCP was like, you can't even get the record cleared. And it was trash. So let's see. Two Chains, aka Titty Boy, gets Hollywood and plays Young Jock and makes him want to quit rap because that's why he stopped rapping. At that point, he said, I'm done with this rap business. I kind of felt like that a year or two later. That's why I stopped making videos too because like, it wasn't because of 2 chains. It was like, this is how rappers act. Once they get on and they get a little power, they want to wash themselves of anything that reminds them of before they were famous. That's how 2 chains was. That's how a lot of rappers are. It's not just him. Um, they want to recreate a new team after that and uh, act like, you know, they're the best. <laughs> they want yes men. This is Jordan Tower with JT News. I'll check you in the next one.